Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about um, how to data log uh, using UpRev in uh, Nissan Juke or a Sentra. Uh, same also applies for a 350Z, 370 and so on. Um, to start with, obviously, you're going to plug in your UpRev cable into the OBD2 port and then into the USB on the side of the computer. And if it's your first time connecting, uh, go to the UpRev website and then click on support. And then if you kind of scroll down, you're going to see the UpRev installer uh, execute file. Go ahead and click that. That'll install UpRev on your laptop. You do need a Windows laptop to get that set up. All right, so once that's installed, um, you go ahead and open up the UpRev link. Uh, the icon on your laptop and the screen is going to appear uh, first it's going to say cable not connected uh, go ahead and plug that in and then make sure that your car is in the accessory position everything's on right and what you want to do is you want to set up a scheme for your data logging so click logging and tracing right and then it opens up the Maybe I've already I've already got it open. The data logging window, which will kind of look like this. Let me zoom in a little bit. Go ahead and, and maximize that. So on the right hand side, you're going to be uh, have an option for all your your PIDs, your parameters, right? This is information that UpRev can read from the ECU. That UpRev converts the data it sees into uh, information that makes sense to everybody. And obviously, there's a lot of a lot of stuff here, and there's no reason to select all this. So I'm going to go through the fields that uh, when you're doing a data log for us, for 2J, that I need to see, uh, that we need to see for the Nissan Juke. Um, and then at the end of the video, we'll cover the ones for the Nissan Sentra, the Spec Vs. But again, for the, all the other models, it, the same basic uh, PIDs apply. It's obviously, there's some in a Juke that aren't uh, in like the 350, you know, like the boost settings, stuff like that. So let's kind of cover those. And then, um, like I said, whenever you're doing data logs for us, these are the ones that you'd like to see, that we like to see, excuse me. Once you're done with your selections, you can actually save your scheme. So that way, each time you open up the data logging box, um, it'll be selected. So at the top, we've got the air fuel correction, right? If you have multiple banks, and you'll see bank one, bank two, typically select both of those here. The Juke just has one. Uh, air fuel ratio, bank one. Now, depending on which vehicle you're working on, this kind of appears differently in UpRev. What you want to be aware of is the one that you select, when the car is idling, should say 14.7, somewhere around stoichiometric. If it's something other than that, then you've selected the wrong air fuel ratio uh, PID. If you have a 04, 05 Nissan Sentra, then you're not going to see that because they run on just narrow bands. Uh, the next one, oh, excuse me. So then below that, uh, battery voltage, and of course for the Juke, the boost sensor bank one, uh, coolant temperature, uh, engine speed, of course that's RPM, uh, exhaust camshaft advanced B1, uh, below that, we've got the high debt misfire flag, the ignition timing advance, injector duty cycle, intake uh, intake camshaft advance knock strength mass airflow in volts and then down towards the bottom your throttle position sensor bank one is fine and then of course your vehicle speed now the reason why when you send us data logs I need to see your throttle position sensor is so I know how far down you're pushing the throttle uh, of course vehicle speed so I know how fast you're going um, with your math just for your own reference if you're Seeing anything above 14.7 volts, you're probably going to max out your math if you're boosted. Uh, knock strength, that varies per vehicle, but that's a number that, of course, we'd like to see at zero. If it's if it's below 1,000, it's not too, too bad. Sometimes there's some phantom knock, but, again, we really don't want to see much of that. Uh, of course, you understand what your camshaft advances, whether it's intake or exhaust, uh, injector duty cycle, anything over 95%. Um, you're getting close to maxing out those injectors. Of course, ignition timing, that's familiar. 
uh, your high debt misfire flag, which means you've had so much knock occur that your ECU has switched over to a less aggressive uh, um, intake timing um, profile. So that way it's, it's going to try to run a less aggressive map so that way it, it pulls out some of that knock. So your that flag is on, your car is definitely not performing as well as it should. Okay? All right. Oh, the car turned off. Okay, so once you have all these selected uh, you can go ahead and, and down here you can kind of minimize or move this this window over to the right like that let's go ahead and get that set up and then we'll start the car and then hit record and then you'll notice you've got all your PIDs, your parameters are showing up recording. And of course, like I said, your AFRs, you want to make sure that's showing somewhere around 14.7. Um, and of course, this car stationary, we're not on the throttle, so that's just hanging out 0.6. So, depending on what we're suggesting with the data logs, you're going to hit, like do a cold start for 30 seconds, hit record, and when you're done, stop. And I'll shut the car off so it's not so loud. And then you can come over here and then go to file and then save. Okay. And then when you what you want to do is you want to save that and say that this is your cold start, right? Uh, and do the same thing with once the car is over 180 degrees, do another uh, log for 30 seconds, the car just idling, and then you'll do one again. Uh, when you're driving and then we'll kind of dictate you know how we want you to drive whether you're just cruising or you're going to kind of roll on the throttle stuff like that um, what I mentioned before I didn't show you guys but once you set your your PIDs your parameters you want you can kind of save that scheme and then call it whatever you want the way each time you open up uprev it's got all those fields are selected um, and that's pretty much really about it that's how you do the data logging uh, in uprev uh, so either you or us could uh, read the information and then modify the tune file for you. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. So uh, I promised you um, the spec V, the 04 to 06 spec V uh, data logging. So I thought I'd show it to you right now. We've got uh, uh, 05 ECU, I'm sorry, uh, 06 ECU and R5 on the bench box, uh, which is this is how we flash it when you send in your ECU. Uh, but of course, go to your logging and tracing. And of course, your PIDs are gonna look very similar to what you saw uh, earlier in the video. Uh, here, of course, we do have the air fuel ratio bank one, right? Now, if you have a 04 or 05 spec V, you're not gonna see that. Uh, that's why you need a wide band uh, if you wanna tune it or you want us to tune it in uprev for you, okay? And then, of course, battery voltage, coolant temperature, engine speed. Uh, I didn't mean to click that. Let's scroll down. There we go. And then your high debt misfire flag, your um, timing advance, injector duty cycle. Of course, all of our spec Vs have the intake cam timing. Select that. Uh, your knock strength, your mass airflow volts, uh, B1, your throttle position sensor, and your vehicle speed. Okay, so those are the fields that I need uh, if we're doing some data logging. All right, thank you.